Victor wants to know this week about getting rich slowly. I'm David C. Barnett, and you're tuned in to Small Business and Deal Making, the podcast, YouTube channel, and blog where I talk about buying, selling, financing, and managing small and medium sized businesses while controlling risk. So if you're looking to take control of your future through buying a business one day, or if you already own a business and you're looking to grow or exit, you've come to the right place. I talk about interesting things, I talk to interesting people, and I answer your questions every week right here. So be sure to hit like and be sure to hit subscribe, and let's get to it. Hey everyone, uh, Victor sent in another question, and I know if you watch this channel, Victor sends in a lot of questions. You should be too. Send them in. This is how I get the content for the videos I make every week. So uh, let me read what uh, what Victor had written. He put, uh, and this was a comment that he left under the three magic pills for business success video that I made a couple of weeks ago. I'll link it here floating somewhere over my head. Um, he says, thanks, David. That was very helpful. It's interesting to think about how much of a person's success is down to other people. Could I suggest a question for next year? Get rich quick schemes are nearly always a scam or are sometimes genuine, genuine opportunities where people need to bring far more to the table than they have been led to believe. So what are some get rich slowly schemes that are genuine and actually work? So first of all, I, I think this is a very insightful comment. Um, you know, get rich quick schemes are nearly always a scam or are sometimes genuine opportunities where people need to bring far more to the table than they have been led to believe. So let's think about this. And, and I'm going to share a story with you that I think leads to this comment uh, or relates to this comment very well. So um, when I left Yellow Pages, I got together with a partner and we started a business. We wanted to buy a franchise junk removal business. And they told us that our market was too small. And so what we did, my partner and I, is we bought an old used truck that had a hoist. So the bed lifted up and we got a machine shop to cage in a box and we got a tarp maker to create a top for us that we could remove. And we got some uniforms made and we painted it up ourselves with paintbrushes and trim clad. And we got a sign shop to put vinyl deckling on it. And we, we basically did everything we could to rip off the concept of the franchise as best we could. And over the next 18 months, we built this business. After six months, my partner and I hardly ever went in the truck. We had two employees by that point, and we were we were doing okay. Like, you know, we were having some good days. We were starting to make some money, but it wasn't fulfilling for me or for my partner. After we got it up and built, the challenge kind of went away, and we're like, what are we going to do with this? Are we going to expand to more trucks? Well, we didn't know if the market would support that, or do we try to make it into a franchise of our own? That was a whole other new mountain of a business to climb over. And so we didn't quite know. So he left to go become a financial planner. And I started to look for something else for myself to do. And what I knew is that I wanted to be involved with business owners again, like I had been in my career at Yellow Pages. So I wanted something to do with business owners. And I started to go on the internet looking for business opportunities. Now, you can imagine if you just go on the internet and search for business opportunities, you're going to come across all of these get rich quick schemes. And of course, the ones that I like to post, poke the most fun at are the buy a business with no money ones, even if you're broke. And if, if you're interested in learning more about that, go to davidcbarnett.com. One of the tabs is buy a business with no money. And I've accumulated all the videos I've made over the years and all the articles I've published about the idea of buying a business a profitable, good, secure, solid business with no money. And, and you can see how I expand and, and kind of poke holes in some of the ideas that that are put out there by some people. But this is what I came across that got me excited. I came across an organization that claimed to do training to help teach you to become a commercial debt broker. Now, for those of you who know my background, you'll know that there is a period of time where I was a commercial debt broker, and this is how I got into that industry. And so I contacted the organization, learned about what it is that they taught, learned what the training materials entailed. I went and spoke with some commercial bankers that I knew who confirmed that they did broker deals, that sometimes brokers came to them with different business opportunities, loan opportunities, and they did those deals. 
And so I felt that I had an idea of, of what was going to be expected of me. I could imagine what it would be like. And I knew that because of my yellow page background and my, my business degree, that I didn't have a problem talking to people about loans or getting loans and talking to business people about their business or that kind of thing. So I invested, if memory serves correctly, I think it was $13,000 uh, into a three-day training program, which also came with a year of support. I flew to Toronto, spent three days doing training, going through a giant thick binder filled with material. And I learned how to you know, approach clients. I learned how to get clients. I learned how to approach lenders. I was given a database of lenders, leasing companies, factoring companies, et cetera. I was shown sample packages for loans. I was shown how to write up the loans, you know, what goes in the executive summary. I was shown a little bit about how to create the cash flow forecast, you know, to demonstrate um, the debt serviceability of, you know, of the business in getting the loan, all that kind of stuff. And I got to tell you, there was a lot to learn. And I came back from it, uh, from the training. I went back home and I began. And I created a new corporation, which is the one that still functions today. So the corporation I run my business in today is that corporation that I set up back in 2008. And so, um, <laughs> so then I went out into the world and I started to approach centers of influence. I started to tell people like accountants and lawyers that I was doing this loan brokering thing. I started to go and talk to bankers and I told them that if they had clients they couldn't help, to send them my way and I might be able to help them out with a lease or a capital lease or a factoring facility or something. And I started to do business. And so with that $13,000 investment over the course of the following 12 months, I booked over $40,000 in commissions. Now, if you ask me in that moment, was that a scam? I would have said, no, it's not a scam. I mean, they taught me how to do this skill and you know, clearly I'm on the path to building a business here. In the next year, I did even better. And then following that is when we got into the financial crisis, the 08, 09 uh, asset back commercial paper problem, which basically ended my business. It wasn't those guys, it was Wall Street. So why do I bring up this story when we're talking about Victor's example? Well, because for me, the training that was provided built upon my own knowledge and background actually allowed me to execute on the skills and information that was provided. And so I was then able to go out and do the business, right? And, and so the salesperson who signed me up came back to me after a year to talk with me about how I was doing. And I expressed my excitement and, you know, told him things were going well. And he asked me for a testimonial. So I gave him a testimonial which he started to share with other people. And then my phone started to ring and I started to hear from other people who were exploring the idea of getting into this loan broker thing um, for small businesses. And what was very interesting were the types of people that were calling me. So when I signed up for the program, uh, they asked me a bunch of questions about my background. I even spoke to the guy at head office in California who asked me about my background, asked me about my sales experience, asked me about my education. Really qualifying questions, I think, that helped to identify that I would be a good candidate, or so I felt. Um, and then when I started to hear from people who had been given all of these, um, who had been proposed that they should come and join this program, the types of people that were reaching out to me were like, uh, people who had spent years welding in the oil patch or people that, you know, worked in a pet shop and they were asking me if the opportunity was legit. And, and I had to honestly say to them, look, these guys are going to give you exactly what they say. And, but do you have the skills, experience, and confidence to go and meet with a business person, talk with them about their business, talk with them about, you know, their different options for leveraging their own balance sheet in some cases, asking them for a retainer in order to open a file. Not all lenders pay commissions to brokers. So sometimes I would meet with someone and I would say, look, here's what I think we can do, but you're gonna have to pay me to do this work to find the loan for you and there's no guarantees. 
And so you have to pay a retainer of $1,000 or $2,000. And so a lot of people might be comfortable in saying, let me help try to get a loan. If I get a loan, I'll be paid a commission. But to actually have the confidence to say to someone, this is what we're going to do. This is the plan. This is what I think I can accomplish. Here's how I can do it. And you need to write me a check if you want me to work for you. That's very different. And so I began to see that there were people who really didn't have the the required background. Uh, what does Victor say? Um, where people need to bring far more to the table than they've been led to believe. And so I think that that applies to those other people that were now calling me to find out if the opportunity was real. And so every single one of them, I'd let them know, yeah, it's a real opportunity, but do you have all the parts in order to execute on that opportunity? And so I think it's pretty insightful. Victor's other question is, you know, what are some of the get rich slowly schemes? And here's, here's what I think is so alluring to people is that, you know, if you're watching this channel, you have an interest in buying and selling, financing and managing small and medium sized businesses. That's all I talk about. Right. But a lot of the times, especially the, the people that I sometimes, you know, point to who are in this buy a business with no money area, um, they don't go out advertising about business. They go out advertising about the wealth and riches that someone's going to obtain. And by the way, this is how you do it. And so the, the thing that opens people up to get rich quick schemes, I think, is the neediness or the desire or the desperation to try to fix some kind of problem. So they get drawn into this idea that there's a quick cash windfall, right? And so in business, there are quick windfalls too. There's the business that, you know, signs the big customer and has a big profit. There's the business that, you know, happens to have the inventory of umbrellas on a rainy day. There's all kinds of instances you can point to, but the people who, who are able to capitalize on those instances or those opportunities have often done a lot of work in order to put themselves in that position. And for every, you know, Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk or every big success story in business, there are thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of other stories you've never heard of how somebody tried to make that moonshot move and failed because everything didn't work out just right for the payoff. So I think that one of the ways to be successful is number one, and, and some people are going to disagree with me because they'll say, you know, you have to reach for the moon and burn the boats and all that kind of stuff. And like, you know, work hard to, to get what you want and you have to risk something to get ahead. I would actually say that the path to success is through a series of measured moves that purposefully avoid risk and avoid losses. So I think this can be best captured by the word incrementalism. And uh, there's a book called the compound effect by Heron, Darren Hardy that talks about this. Um, all the books I mentioned, by the way, you can find on my Amazon store. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes down below. Um, there's another book, though, that I think talks about this even more because people will try to isolate business activity or their life or their relationships, etc. cetera. Um, Gene Simmons, bass player for Kiss, wrote a fantastic book a few years ago called Me, Inc., where he described his journey as an immigrant to the United States and then his ascent into the music business and, you know, creating the band and becoming famous. And this is where most people would join his story. But what Gene Simmons talks about in that book is he talks about how he basically went back and forth across the line between being an employee and being an entrepreneur in one shape or form or another. And that some of his guiding decisions about whether or not he would get into business or take a job had to do with what he could take away from that experience. So it wasn't just incrementalism with him and his money and his business. It was also incrementalism with himself, his skill set, his, his business acumen and his knowledge. And he was looking at all this together sort of in a matrix, looking at how he can move one step in front of the other, constantly moving towards his long-term goals by improving himself and building his base of resources, making the business moves. And it was only when he achieved a certain level of success and stability that he started to make these more riskier moves 
that he could recover from if he failed. And I think that's the, the danger is that people will get involved in something that they don't fully understand. They'll reach for the moon. They'll overextend themselves. They'll, they'll over leverage over risk, not fully understanding the risks that they're getting involved in. And then when something goes wrong, the whole thing, you know, collapses like a house of cards. And so I've seen this, for example, with people who've had a career as a, a teacher or a civil servant or something, and they'll go mortgage their house to get a down payment, and go borrow another million dollars and build like a franchise restaurant. Right. And I've never been in the restaurant business and they don't really know what they're getting into. And all of a sudden they've signed guarantees on a million dollars of debt and put the house out on the lawn. Right. And then when that doesn't work out, well, what happened? Well, then they're snookered. Right. So that's, I think, what you want to avoid. Um, earlier, before I got into business brokerage, I owned three different apartment buildings. And I've talked about this before, the small apartment blocks, three and four unit buildings. And what I learned from that experience is that it took a lot of my time in order to really create cash flow from them. I had to devote a lot of my time and effort into them. But if you bought a million dollars worth of small apartment buildings and then you just waited 20 years for the mortgages to be paid off, then you'd have a million dollars in assets, right? That's pretty simple. But what it takes is a willingness to stick to the plan for the 20 years, right? And a lot of people who would get into real estate investing, you know, they're going to be trying to leverage this way and leverage that way and make more acquisitions and, you know, keep pushing the ball, keep pushing the ball to go further and further. One of the ways that I was able to be successful and not end up in a tight position in my own real estate portfolio is because I put larger down payments down than the banks actually required, which meant that I could better weather vacancies. And there was one year where one of my buildings had a 15% vacancy rate where normally people are told to count on 5%, for example. And so that eddy steady move on a solid foundation, I think is, is the way to go. I've talked before about how buying a business for a lot of people is a way of leveling up. It's a way of moving from one plane onto the next. And I would agree with that. And I also think that buying an existing operating business is also an incremental move because you are not getting into something with a lot of unknowns. You're buying a, something that already has that established cash flow, the employee base, the systems, the customers, et cetera. I think that buying a business is far more of an incrementalist move than starting one from scratch, for example. And that's why I'm a big proponent of it, because I really think that in order to, to get ahead long term, you have to avoid the losses. There's famous Warren Buffett quotes about that, but uh, that's what I think. Anyway, if you uh, if you want to learn more about how to buy a business, um, you should uh, go to businessbuyeradvantage.com, sign up for uh, my course where I teach people how to buy a business in a risk-controlled way. If you're interested in getting the book from Gene Simmons or the one that I mentioned, Darren Hardy, Compound Effect, um, all of my books are at amazon.com slash shop slash David Barnett, all one word. And yes, I do earn a small commission when people buy things there, but it's far easier for me to put books into my Amazon store than it is to maintain a website somewhere as a, as a reading list. And with that, I'll thank Victor very much for the question. And I'll thank all of you guys for watching. Please send in the questions and comments. Please like and share the video. Uh, put your comments down below. Thank you very much. And uh, here's to a fantastic 2022. So how can you learn more about buying, selling, financing, and managing small and medium-sized businesses? Easy. Head over to my blog site, davidcbarnett.com, where you can learn more about me and how I work with my clients. You can learn more about my books and the online courses that I've prepared for you. You can find out about how to subscribe to my email list, the YouTube playlists, etc. There's literally hundreds of hours of content there, all for free, and I'd love for you to be my guest. Special thanks go out to Jeff Alpaw Customs for being my tailor. Men all around the world can look dangerous, just like me, with the help of Jeff Alpaw Customs. JeffAlpaw.com. Use the code DCB10 to save. They handle multiple currencies and ship anywhere you happen to be.